Hey there. Uh, we've talked uh, extensively before about uh, systems of linear equations. In fact, uh, in the most recent video on that subject, I believe it was, um, we were talking about LU decomposition specifically. And I got the idea for uh, this kind of series of videos uh, from a page. Uh, let, in fact, let's go look at it here. We were looking at this page uh, from Georgia Tech on numerical methods for finance, uh, specifically on this uh, matrix factorization uh, section here. We talked about LU decomposition uh, before, and I want to go and talk about um, this, the SVD, the singular value decomposition. And now they mentioned various things in this paragraph um, right here, dimensionality reduction. And we talked briefly about uh, the SVD in terms of, of uh, compressing an image. Uh, this was the notebook uh, that we had where we loaded in an image here. Here's our original image excuse me, here's our original image, and then we kind of compressed it down uh, with the singular value decomposition. We threw away most of the, um, most of the information that we have, you know, that, that's contained within the image, and even with, even containing, even retaining only uh, 10 columns of the, those decomposed, uh, U, that decomposed U matrix, we were able to kind of get back a, a well, it's not a, a good, uh, good uh, compression or good uh, representation of this image, but you know it is recognizable. And if we were to um, bump this up to 100, we do get back a reasonable reconstruction of our original image. Here's the original. Here's only keeping a hundred columns. So that was like image compression and dimensionality reduction, uh, which I didn't really go into in, in great detail. I was just kind of playing around to re-familiarize re myself with the SVD, because the way it works in NumPy is a little different than the way it works in, in MATLAB. Uh, but this time I want to go into it in terms of solving systems of equations. Uh, first we'll do the obvious case if you have a square matrix, as many unknowns as you have uh, constraining equations. Uh, look briefly at that. But th then I want to talk about kind of the more interesting uh, situation where you, where you have either overdetermined or underdetermined systems. So you have either more variables than uh, constraining equations, or you have a lot more constraints on your equations than you have variables to meet those constraints. So let's just uh, jump into it and get going. Okay, so before we get into coding, there are a couple of things I just want to kind of refresh you on. Uh, unitary matrices, and then some of the advantages, the advantage of having a diagonal matrix when dealing with like systems of linear equations. So with unitary matrices, uh, the inverse is its own transpose, or if we're dealing with complex numbers, it's complex conjugate transpose. Uh, we're just going to restrict ourselves to real numbers now and just say uh, inverse is equal to this transpose. So we don't have to do any calculations to figure out the uh, inverse of a unitary matrix. You just interchange rows and columns and you have it. Now with diagonal matrices, if you have a system of equations that kind of comes out in this format, so you have only in your square matrix you have only entries along the diagonal and everything else is zero, well that's really, that's that's already solved for you, right? Because this just says a times x1 is equal to y1. In other words, x1 is just uh, y1 divided by a. So the inverse of this, this diagonal matrix is just, uh, you know, the reciprocal of the, the diagonal elements. So again, it's essentially already solved for you. So, uh, okay, now with that uh, being said, let's get on and actually uh, do a little bit of coding. Three two, one, go. So we don't need much in terms of imports, just uh, NumPy, and I will pull in matplotlib um, just to do, do, do some plotting. And I was going to use the minimize function. Uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I haven't quite decided on that yet. So let's run that. And now let's talk about the singular value decomposition itself. So what I'm going to do is kind of... Um, do the, 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 the mathematical notation in this cell here and then do a little bit of coding below that. So the idea here is that the singular value decomposition says that a matrix A can be written or broken down into the product of three separate matrices. And for the sake of clarity, I'm referring to what's called the reduced singular value decomposition here. Um, <clears throat> that's not going to be really particularly relevant, but that's what I'm using. So we could write uh, any matrix A, in fact, as the product of three matrices, where the matrices U and V are unitary, so remember that from up here, 
and the matrix sigma is um, uh, diagonal. And before we go on to linear systems, let's just do an example. So uh, let's just create a random matrix. Um, I don't know, let's use um, normally distributed random numbers and let's just do the size of uh, five rows and three columns. I need an equal sign here. Okay, let's just print that out, print A. Let me set a constant seed so that we always get the same uh, number. So np.random.seed. I've been using two for ages. I don't know why. So this is our, our matrix. So let's calculate the singular value decomposition of that. So um, our U matrix, I'm going to use S for sigma and V transpose because uh, uh, NumPy's function returns the transpose of the V matrix is equal to np dot linear algebra dot svd a and i'm going to do a full equals false just to give it the uh the reduced svd so does that run it does not full is it full something else i thought it was full full matrices uh false Okay, so we have our three matrices, and let's just say uh, print U times, what's going on here? Um, before we do that, let's actually, what the hell is going on? Full matrices is equal to false. That works fine. Um, print U dot shape. Print s dot shape print vt dot shape s dot shape okay so what uh, numpy does is actually instead of returning a matrix for uh, our sigma matrix a diagonal matrix it just returns the diagonal elements <coughs> so if we want to use this in a calculation we have to um, you know explicitly cast it as a matrix so uh, let's just show that the product of those three matrices gives back A. So let's do print U times, we need to make a uh, diagonal matrix out of our S. So NP dot diag. So we're going to use the elements of S and they're on the main diagonal, which is a zero index. And now we just multiply it times our VT and let's run it. And indeed, we get back our original matrix. So cool. That's all I wanted to show with that, uh, that quick little demo. So let's go back and talk about solving linear equations. Okay, guys, I realized uh, I put on a jacket after I kind of did the introduction, and I realized the um, microphone cable was dragging on the zipper. So I also checked the audio levels and then realized that they were a little bit low. So I've tweaked them a bit. So hopefully I haven't blown out your eardrums. But um, let's get back to it with linear systems. So um, the idea here is we're trying to solve, again, this type of equation, AX equals B, where A is a matrix. And in this case, we're going to start off with square matrices. We can singular, we could do a singular value decomposition and rewrite A as U sigma V transpose times X times B. But all of these matrices, we either know the inverse or they're trivially, uh, trivially found. So we can just rewrite this as X equals um, V sigma inverse u transpose times b at the vector of nodes and that's all there is to it so let's quickly come down and just kind of demonstrate that so um, i'm just going to alter this a matrix here and i'm going to make it three by three just to keep things kind of small uh, we don't need to print it out anymore let's create a b matrix and do np dot array um, i'm just going to do one two and three so there's our b matrix um, let's do the singular de singular value decomposition of A. So get, we'll get our U, S, uh, our sigma, our S matrix, and our V transpose matrices. And we don't need this anymore. So let me just run it to make sure I don't have any typo issues. That looks good. So all we need to do is basically this. So our solution X is equal to uh, V, which is the transpose of V transpose. So let's go VT dot T times 
uh, sigma inverse. Well, sigma inverse is just one over these uh, these these um, singular values here. So that is equal to np dot diag one over s, and that's on the uh, main diagonal. And then uh, we need to multiply that by u transpose. So that is u dot t. So uh, that looks good. Print x. Does it run? Why am I getting a matrix back? I should be getting a column vector back. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. x is equal to... Oh, I forgot to multiply it times b here, right? It, it's these uh, these matrices times the column vector b. So times b. There, that should be our solution. So let's just verify it by calling the actual uh, linear algebra command. So print mp.linalg.solve our a matrix b. Excellent. Uh, identical. So let's just go on and let's discuss some more interesting cases because this is just basically a, a square matrix and you can solve this any number of ways. So oftentimes in fields like uh, data science, engineering, um, you know, just experimental and, or experimental and applied science, sciences in general, you don't often end up with these types of square matrices. You end up with systems that are either overdetermined or underdetermined or, you know, situations where your matrix um, A is either tall or skinny or short and fat. Uh, let me explain what I mean by that. So I've created a couple random points here and let me just plot them out here. So here we go. So suppose I want to create some sort of linear model to this, basically do a, a linear regression. So let me make this a markdown cell and I want a bunch of or rather, I have a bunch of equations, one for each point here. So I have six points, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have six equations, one, two, three, four, five, six. And my model is linear, so I don't know the slope, which I called beta, or I don't know that intercept, uh, which I called alpha. So I have two unknowns, alpha and beta, and I have six equations. This is obviously overdetermined. There is, generally speaking, no exact solution to this. So let's explain what I mean by uh, tall and skinny in the overdetermined case. So let's recast this matrix, uh, rec re recast the system of equation equations in matrix form. So this is what our matrix equation looks like. So we have we have a whole bunch of rows here, six rows and only two columns. So that's what I mean by tall and skinny. And we have only two um, two unknowns that we need to solve for. And then, of course, our, our known y values here. So let me actually type out this matrix here, our, our this rectangular matrix, and let's, let's just play around with it a bit. So our y matrix here is just going to be all the, all the known. So this is our b in this ax equals b thing. Um, and here is our A matrix. It's the column. It's our, all of our X values. And then the second, second column is, is all ones. So, I mean, just to be very explicit and obvious about it, um, if you type in np.linelg.solve A comma Y, it's obviously going to give you an error. And indeed it does. And it says basically that this matrix A needs to be square. Likewise, if we were to try to calculate the inverse of this matrix, np.linelg.inv A, again, an error, not a square matrix. So as, as, as I said before, you can do this singular value decomposition with any type of matrix. And obviously you can do... Um, this type of thing just as well with our rectangular matrix as you can with a square. And where I want to go with this is the idea of the pseudo inverse. So let's come back down here. Uh, where were we? And let's calculate the singular value decomposition of this matrix. So u comma s comma v transpose is equal to linelg dot svd a. Okay. And let's uh, just say for the sake of argument that x is equal to copying and pasting from above, x is equal to um, v times the inverse of our sigma matrix times u transpose times our known vector of y. And let's just print out the results. So print x. 
um, 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 full matrices. What the hell is going on here? Comma. Full matrices is equal to false. So these are our x values. Well, let me rephrase that. This, this, system of, this system of equations has no solution. So what are these values here that we are calculating? So I'm basically just going to give away the answer and come down here and let's just print out um, np.polyfit x comma y and let's just uh, do a first order polynomial. Um, Oh, I overwrote X. So let me call this, um, oh, for now, I'll just call this capital X so that we don't overwrite our values. And I need to rerun this, that, that, and that. Now what the hell is wrong with it? 1D vector, Ugh, for Christ's sake. NumPy, the way it handles vectors sometimes really annoys the hell out of me. So let us uh, just copy that and we'll paste it up here before we do all this reshaping things. So we're printing out the linear regression coefficients before our um, SVD pseudo inverse type thing. So let me just get, clean that up. And I need to rerun that again. Run, 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 run. And you see that our singular value decomposition down here, the values we get are basically just the linear regression coefficients here, our slope and our intercept. Now I've already referred to this as the pseudo inverse and it turns out there's a built-in command in, in NumPy and MATLAB and things like that called uh, P inverse. For example, uh, we don't have to type in all this stuff to get this. We could just go, for example, print uh, numpy.linalg.p inverse a and then if we multiply that times y we should get back our regression coefficients oh what now oh it's this damn uh, polyfit command I'm just going to comment that out for the time being and just rerun everything so there we go. Uh, P inverse gives back the same results. And now keep in mind for later, um, let me make this markdown cell, that in least squares regression, we are minimizing uh, the, 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 the square of the error. So if we were to take A times our matrix X and subtract off Y, well, that's our error. And to phrase it kind of in a... Um, linear algebra type of sort, of sort of way, what we are actually minimizing is the two norm of that error vector. I'll clean this up when I upload, uh, upload it to GitHub, but this is the quantity that we're minimizing. So somehow this pseudo inverse is, is calculating this quantity here. Just keep that in the, the back of your mind. So now I want to talk about the underdetermined situation where where we have more variables than constraints. So in general, you're going to have an infinite number of possible solutions to that to that system. And I wanted to uh, just do a quick demonstration of that using the pseudo inverse. Um, so I'm just going to create two randomly, you know, a, a rectangular matrix and another column vector. Uh, the reason I'm kind of doing this weird, shaping it in this weird sort of way is because uh, I wanted to demonstrate this kind of um, norm minimization again. Uh, but I couldn't beat it into submission uh, with Python for whatever reason that the minimization routines just kept crashing. So I did it in MATLAB. But MATLAB, the, the way they create random matrices or what, the way they populate them is kind of inverse to uh, Python. So I just created a matrix here and then I transpose it to get my underdetermined system. So let's actually just print out what our A matrix looks like in this case. So print A. Oh, man. So here's our A matrix. We have only three rows and five columns. So we only have three constraining equations and basically five unknowns. So let's just kind of uh, work this out. Uh, do we want to do it? Let's do it using the uh, SVD since we've been hitting on that um, as the topic of this video. So U S V transpose is equal to numpy len L set SVD, our A matrix. And we have to do this full matrices is equal to false 
and false works better if you spell it correctly. And essentially we could just copy, um, let's just copy our line from here. So the a potential solution um, is equal to just the pseudo inverse of this times our b vector. And let's just uh, do it explicitly with a pseudo inverse. So uh, print numpy dot linelg dot p inverse of a, and we will multiply that times b. And we get the same thing. So uh, let me comment this out and just say, well, if there are an infinite number of solutions, what, what, which solution is this? Okay, so quickly I want to show why I was kind of harping on that um, that uh, uh, L2 norm minimization uh, thing. So here in MATLAB, I've created basically the same problem. So I create those identical matrices, our A matrix, our B matrix, and I solve for it uh, via the pseudo inverse. So let me just run this code. And you notice, let me make this window a little bigger. You notice our numbers are identical to what we got in Python. Uh, not, not a surprise there. But uh, I want to come down here and I want to write a function that takes in a vector x. And what it's going to do is this function is going to be minimized. So we are minimizing it with respect to the norm of x. So geometrically speaking, we're just making x as small as possible, the length of x as small as possible. And I'm running that through a function. Um, fmin con is basically constrained and minimization in MATLAB. Um, again, we're minimizing our you know, this norm of the vector x, and I'm putting a constraint on the uh, um, this minimization. And the constraint is that a times x has to equal b. So let me run this again now that these are uncommented. And I also want to compare the two. So the result of this minimization minus our um, our initial, the, the one we found up here, our x, what I called x2, is that basically, are these basi basically equal? So let me run these. So you notice for all practical purposes, um, our values are identical between these two, two code snippets. So, you know, what we're saying basically is in the case of the underdetermined system, the pseudo inverse returns uh, the, the, the vector that minimizes its its length in the L2 sense that also satisfies the AX equal to B uh, constraint. So it is a solution, but it's the solution that minimizes the length of the vector. So uh, back in Python, excuse me, I just bumped the microphone here. Um, yeah, this is basically matrix decomposition for systems of linear equations other than just basic square matrices. So you can you can solve the square case. Uh, you can do an underdetermined case, uh, which kind of, you know, as, as I said before, minimizes the vector length. You could do the overdetermined case, which is basically just a, a least squared uh, fit. And there are already commands built into Python, like uh, uh, pseudo inverse, like right here. Uh, so you probably would not do this matrix decomposition yourself. There's already code built in. And there are also can routines in NumPy. Uh, for example, uh, in the linear algebra, there's a um, function called basically called least squares which does this type of this type of fit or maybe fits not the right word it does this type of of you know pseudo inverse multiplication uh for you cool uh pretty straightforward again as usual i will clean up the notebook put it up on github uh comments questions please feel free to leave them below and i will uh, see you later